So I've come to the Inspiring Minds Forum today to talk about living around money. Um, for since 2008, I've been moneyless um, up until very, very recently. And in a way, I've just come to share my experiences, the philosophy behind why I've done it in the first place, um, and and the practicalities involved. Um, but the main thing I really talk about these days is cultural stories and and how we can choose a different cultural story than the one of money. Money was a symptom of a different time. Uh, it was created at a time where, where that was relevant, but now given the social, ecological and economic crises we're faced with, we've got to ask ourselves the question, is money a story that still works for us? Because stories are a very good thing in themselves. Like We need cultural stories, but we need cultural stories that actually benefit our lives, not, not, become, not enslave us in a way. And money has come to enslave us. You know, which of us feels that that, um, that money is a tool for us anymore? Money has become something that we have to get in order to pay our bills and to pay the bank and so on. And what I really talk about now is let us co-create new stories that are relevant for our land, for the for our communities, and for the crisis that we're facing. Yeah, one of the main reasons for giving up money was to reconnect with nature, to understand my my interconnectedness and my dependency on it. What money does is, is allows us to be disconnected from nature. It allows me to get wine from South Africa, um, an iPod from gadgets, from things that have come from all over the world, and I have no relationship with the people who made them or with the components that came from the earth that created them. And what happens there is that we, we don't know what goes on in our, in our name. So we've created this kind of very polluting, very destructive global economy but because we're hidden from the consequences of it, um, we just continue with it. We don't, like, we don't actually know what happens for us to get stuff. And so by reconnecting with nature, by reconnecting with what you consume, um, you realize exactly what goes on in the process. And I feel that nothing's really going to change until we reconnect with those things. first book was about my experience of living without money. And the next book's called The Moneyless Manifesto. And it's about how we can transition to a place where we're much less reliant on money. So it's full of philosophy, number one, and it's full of um, all the practical advice on how to incorporate whatever, as many elements as you can into your life. So maybe you still have a mortgage, and you can't do anything about that, but you can be moneyless for transport and accommodation and when you travel and for food and for different elements. So given your unique situation, you can become moneyless for different parts. And so that if some point in the future where there is economic collapse or, or whatever, or ecological collapse, then you've got a whole new toolkit of ways of, of meeting your needs without money. The problem we have right now is that we're 100% on, dependent on money to meet our needs. And that there's no resilience there. We need to build resilience. We need to, um, we need to diversify our own economies. And so the book is really about, a, a, it's a toolkit um, to, to diversify our own personal economies. So with free economy, the experience has been that actually in countries where they've experienced economic um, downturns, like majorly like Greece and Portugal, um, it's gone, it's skyrocketed because once people see the fallacies of the main economy, they start looking for alternatives. And so it's been very interesting the last two years to see how, where the, the dominant economy has been in decline, how the alternative economies have just risen like this. Um, and so free economy is taking on its own life now. I don't have to do much work in that respect anymore because people are actually looking for solutions 
I don't have to propose solutions anymore, so um, it's, it's pretty much looking after itself. And it's now in 160 countries around the world. You know, there's active groups in, in all those countries, and it shows that actually people are wanting a new way of doing things. And I think free economy is one tool in that, in that whole change. Like, it, it's not for everybody, and I think it needs to be tailored to each person in each different culture. But if it's useful, it's out there. If I could give one message, it would be to change the lens through which you see the world. It's, it's to take off this lens that says, how much can I get? And to put on a new lens, whatever it may be, it could be, how much can I give? Um, how many people can I make smile today? You know, how gently can I walk on the earth? These are all different lenses that we can wear. And just imagine the world we could live in if we woke up in the morning and said, how gently in the earth can I live? How many people can I make smile? It'll be a whole different reality. And I want people to kind of co-create new realities and not just feel that they have to make do with this one. This one isn't working very well. Marky, he, uh, I know a lot of amazing people, but he's probably the, the guy with the most integrity of anyone I've ever met. His heart is so big that he really does see the consequences of his lifestyle on people thousands of miles away and animals and plants and ecosystems thousands of miles away. So he's coming from a place, as I say, a, a very a non-preachy pace of really wanting to make sure he's doing as little as possible to harm others. And that really comes across. And I think when, when you connect with people from that place, rather than a, you're doing things wrong or you shouldn't be doing this kind of preaching place, then it's almost impossible not to be inspired. And uh, because Mark's so knowledgeable and skillful and bright, it's very difficult not to be empowered as well and have some really clear ideas about what you can do to move forward. Next week, we've got um, the um, arch villain, Dan Herring. Uh, founder and um, one of the directors of the Sunrise Group who run the Sunrise Festival and also Off Grid and he's going to be talking about sustainable communities because he's very much an active participant in that. So if you're interested in um, responding to some of the challenges and predicaments that we find ourselves in 2012 on this planet and you're interested in not just finding out about it but actually be giving tools to practically change your lifestyle or change the way you live or change your relationship uh, with the world, this is definitely the place to come.